are the two ways we can think about this. Indeed, the, the opinion is divided in Africa. But uh, the analysts also have uh, said this might impact some militant groups in Africa. For instance, Al-Shabaab killed people in a bombing over the weekend. And another rebel Islamic militant group, ADF, killed people in Uganda, tourists in Uganda, and crossed Diara Kong and killed more. How this will impact those militant groups? I don't think it will have an impact. These were killers in the first place, uh, regardless of what's happening in sort of in Palestine, Israel. And so my sense is that they will continue to do their dirty work where, where they are able to get away with. But I just don't believe that the, the crisis in Palestine, Israel, will have any influence on these people one way or the other. And so my sense is that they have their own particularist agenda, and their agenda is terroristic. And that's what they are going to continue to do. There are conflicts on the continent, some have said, are being forgotten as the, the Israeli Hamas war is in the limelight. What's your comment on that? My response to that as an African is that Africans have to wake up, that we are adults, we are not children, we are not under the colony anymore, and consequently others are going to meddle into our affairs if we allow them to do so. And so the fundamental question here is, will African leaders, uh, being a member of the Pan-African Parliament myself, I have seen this inside out. If the leadership in our continent or in our particular countries doesn't have the moral fortitude to see that the children of tomorrow's generations are going to be competitive in this world, economically, skill-wise, in terms of trade, in terms of intelligence, in terms of sports, and so on and so forth, and do what it takes to make the preparations for these people and be accountable to them, then it doesn't matter what's happening elsewhere. The Europeans, the Americans, the East Asians will all ignore us and take us for a ride when the opportunity arises. Adi Ismail Samata is a professor at the University of Minnesota and a senator in the Somali parliament. He spoke with my colleague Douglas Mpunga from Minneapolis, USA. And at the first round of this presidential and legislative election, with the announcement of a runoff in November, Denise Nipsey has more from Monrovia. The runoff election is hereby declared. The National Elections Commission NEC of Liberia on Tuesday released the final results of the October 10 presidential poll. NEC Chairperson Deviato Brown Lassana says incumbent President George Weah of the Coalition for Democratic Change, CDC, has more votes in the first round than his main competitor Joseph Wakai of the Unity Party. The results of the 10th October 2023 polls showed that the ticket of the Congress for Democratic Change, CDC, obtained the highest number of votes, 804,087, constituting 43.83%, followed by the ticket of Unity Party, which obtained 796,961 votes, constituting 43.44%. Brian Lassana said the country who go to a runoff vote since none of the candidates were able to obtain the required 50 plus one. With the results of the 10th October polls showing that no presidential ticket obtained 50 percent plus one vote, a runoff election is hereby declared to be held on Tuesday, 14 November 2023. Between the two tickets that obtained the highest number of votes, the presidential ticket of the Coalition of Democratic Change, CDC, led by Mr. George Manawia, and the presidential ticket of Unity Party, UP, led by Mr. Joseph Numa Boyka. Meanwhile, the NEC has officially declared the opening of the campaign from now till November 12, 2023, at 11.59 p.m., Moreover, November 14, 2023 has been scheduled as the official date for voting. This is the second time that we are in Bwakai will compete in a round of election. They met before in the 2017 polls and we are was victorious. It is expected that regional and tribal alignment will play heavily as usual during the runoff campaign. Both we are in Bwakai are having talks with losing candidates in the first round to gain their support. They have both met with the standard bearers of the collaborating political parties, Alexander Cummings and Edward Appleton of the Grassroots Development Movement. For VOS Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise.
A Mauritanian prosecutor Tuesday requested a 20-year prison sentence for former president Mohamed Oud Abdel Aziz. Aziz has been on trial since January 25th for allegedly abusing his power in order to amass wealth when he ruled the Sahelian nation from 2008 to 2019. Prosecutor Ahmed Old Mustafa said all elements in the hands of the courts proved that a crime has been committed. He called for the former leader's assets to be confiscated. Aziz, who is 66 years old, was president of Mauritania, a pivotal country between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa from 2008 to 2019. He listened to the prosecutor's closing speech without finching. Aziz has maintained his innocence and said the trial is political and should be dismissed. Earlier this month, his lawyers claimed that the court refused to process the request of his defense and to call witnesses on Aziz's behalf. Ten other people, including two former prime ministers as well as former ministers and businessmen, are on trial with Aziz. They have been accused of illicit, amassing wealth, abusing their functions and influence peddling. The prosecutor's closing arguments lasted about three hours and saw him request sentences of 10 years in prison against the two former prime ministers and two ministers as well as the, to confiscate their properties. For the other defendants, he requested five years in prison. No indication was given as the date of the ruling in, the, in that case. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.